Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman. I'm your GPR professor from LearnGPR.com. And today's video is about the fuzzy zone, or some people call the hazy zone. And so, what is the fuzzy zone? Well, really the question that we should be asking is, why can't you see shallow targets with your ground penetrating radar? Why can't you see shallow targets with your ground penetrating radar? And we're going to give you, I'm going to give you three reasons why there's this fuzzy zone or hazy zone, um, which is not a zone that it's impossible to see targets within, but it's more difficult to identify them. And, you know, the fuzzy zone will vary for different uh, uh, antenna frequencies. Okay, the fuzzy zone will vary for different antenna frequencies. So what is the fuzzy zone? Here's your GPR profile. And you know, this is like time, which could also be depth, right? Could also be depth. Well, in this little area here, it's going to be difficult. It can be difficult to see shallow targets. So it might be one centimeter, right? The zone might be one centimeter, which is small. And so the fuzzy zone is right. It's very small, easy to see. Then you're really not going to miss those. And that might be something like for a uh, 2600 megahertz antenna, or it might be, you know, 15 centimeters or he or, or half a foot, right? Half a foot. Okay, for something like a 400 megahertz antenna. Or it could be something that's, you know, could be 30 centimeters, maybe a 200 megahertz antenna, okay? And again, these are, are, they're not solid and in stone, but obviously the fuzzy zone gets larger, right, as you go uh, lower and lower with your antenna frequencies. So the, the, this gets into what is an appropriate frequency for you to use, you know, what's appropriate antenna frequency for you to use on your particular project. And so if you're trying to find something in this zone here, no matter which one you have, right, because if you're still in 2600, but you need to see something within the first two millimeters, right, you're still within the fuzzy zone. So how shallow is your target? How large is your target? And can you see it with a particular antenna uh, is the real question. This may come up as if you have very shallow small rebar or very shallow small, especially small um, pipes. So a lot of times we see people miss pipes that are two inches below the ground surface, right? Uh, and they're doing a utility scan and they have a 250 megahertz antenna and the pipe is two inches and it's only, you know, two inches below the ground surface. They might miss it, right? They might miss it. Why? Well, because the fuzzy zone for a 250, you know, might be close to a foot. Okay, certainly between a half a foot and a foot. Um, another time that this might, you know, be an issue is why can't, I get this question all the time, why can't I measure the thickness between, you know, in, in asphalt? It's a thin layer, why can't I measure its thickness? Or why can't I see the asphalt and the, and the, and the you know, the gravel layer? Now, you might not be able to see it because they might just not be different enough, um, but you might not be able to see it because you're in the fuzzy zone. Right? You gotta get in the so if your asphalt thickness is you know four centimeters, but you're using a 250, it could be a problem. So you may have to use you know a 2600 megahertz antenna to make sure you really get to image that perfect. But why is this, right? Why do you have this, this zone, this mysterious fuzzy or as some say hazy zone that it's difficult to see your shallow targets, right? Why is that the case? And that's what we're gonna go over for the rest of the video. And it's important to understand, wrap your head around it, because I hope, I hope if you wrap your head around these ideas, uh, that it will help you choose the most appropriate frequencies, you know, to use uh, for any given project. And sometimes that means you might have to use different frequencies for the same project. If you have to map shallow things and deeper things, then you might have to use multiple frequencies. So number one is antenna spacing. So each of your antenna, most of you, this is not all, but most commercial antenna, especially for utility locating, archaeology, uh, concrete scanning, most of these have two antenna, right? Two different antennas in their same box 
or you just got two antenna that are not shielded. But you typically have two antenna, a transmitter and a receiver, right? The transmitter antenna creates the pulse, the receiver collects any information, you know, that reflects back uh, 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 from that sent, you know, transmitted pulse. And so each of those, the size of those antenna will vary depending on the frequency you want to produce. The lower the frequency, the larger the antenna. The larger the antenna, the further away they have to be from each other, typically. And it's usually the size of the antenna. So you usually get, you know, you'll get a, uh, let's say, a transmitter, okay, and a receiver. And you'll see that these happen to be a distance, right? So let's say that this is six, uh, let's say that's 15 centimeters, right, um, long, right? And this is going to be about 15 centimeters um, in spacing between them. So number one reason that you get this fuzzy zone and why you can't see shallow targets is antenna spacings. The further that these are away from each other, the more difficult it is to see things within that zone uh, of spacing. So that's why it could be about 15 cent. In this case, it could be about 15 centimeters that you're struggling to see targets because it's actually got to go down and come back, but you've got this spread between them. So the antenna spacing is reason number one. Larger the antenna, larger the spacing, the greater the fuzzy zone. Think about very low frequency antenna, things that are used to map geological structures that are 50 meters below the ground surface. Those are huge antennas, right? They might be, uh, uh, you know, two and a half meters on a side, might be, you know, three to five meters long total. Things gonna be five meters out. You're gonna get a very thick fuzzy zone. You're gonna not be able to see anything in that first few meters, but you might be able to see something that's 50 meters. So spacing, is number one. And by the way, these are all related, like most things are in GPR. Numbers one, two, and three are all related to each other. Antenna spacing based on the size of the antenna. So reason uh, uh, number two is, that I'm gonna tell you is wavelength. Now some people may not agree with all my three, and if you don't agree with them, I'd love to hear your comments below. I promise I will answer them back. So comment below. Uh, but number two is wavelength. So obviously the lower, right, the lower the frequency, right, the lower the frequency, right, is going to equal longer wavelengths, okay? So the lower the frequency, the longer the wavelengths. The lower the frequency and the longer the wavelength, the longer the wavelength, the longer the wavelength that you have, the more difficult it is to see smaller or shallow things. So your wavelength is going to determine when you can begin to even see a target. So if your wavelength, so for example, try to map a thin target like we were talking about before asphalt. To map a thin layer, you want the layer, you have to have a wavelength that's probably smaller than the thickness of that layer. You need a full cycle in order to really be able to image something like that. So to image anything in that top area, you're going to need it to fully cycle at least once. So if you have a long wavelength, it's going to be a struggle for you to image something within that first wavelength depth, uh, um, you know, with any, with any kind of resolution. And so that's why, again, part of the problem with being able to measure a thin asphalt layer with a 250 megahertz antenna is it's a much longer wavelength, you know, than four centimeters. And so it's going to take some time for that thing to cycle through so you can actually get a full signal in order to map something. So wavelength, right, which is related to uh, antenna size, uh, right, kind of also related to antenna spacing, is another reason why you struggle to see things in the top X depth, right? And so obviously the wavelength is shorter with a higher frequency antenna. So the wavelength and the fuzzy zone for a 2600 megahertz antenna is gonna be very small. And to be able to see things like within that kind of one centimeter area. Um, but with a, with, a, with a 250, you know, it's gonna be something like 20 to 25 centimeters before you can really begin to image things well. So wavelength is number two. And lower frequency if you have longer wavelengths, making it more difficult. All right, the final piece of the puzzle, right, so wave length, final piece is, Pulse duration, okay? Pulse duration. And I'll make another video, by the way, but these are also related 
to uh, uh, to 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 accuracies in measuring depths of targets, or depths of layers, or thicknesses of layers. Both of these are related to accuracies, and it's because of both of these that it can be very difficult to get perfectly accurate, you know, depth uh, 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 values. Um, you know, these can influence it. So no, but, but but they also influence the fuzzy zone. So number three is the pulse duration. What this is is how long is your GPR actually spitting out a single a signal, right? How long is it spitting out a signal? I'm literally spitting now, okay? But how long does it spit out a signal for? Excuse me. Well, the lower the frequency, right? So lower, right? Low frequency gives you long pulse durations, okay? Low frequencies give you long pulse durations. So if you have like a 200 plus megahertz antenna, you may get a five nanosecond pulse duration. That means it's pumping out a signal for five whole nanoseconds. So if you think about two-way travel time, right? Two-way travel time is, uh, that's, you know, that's, that's uh, um, two and a half nanoseconds of depth worth in a sense, where if you're in, you know, reasonably sandy soils, okay, and you're getting 10 centimeters per nano, uh, 10 centimeters per nanoseconds, two and a half nanoseconds is 25 centimeters. So it's spitting this thing out. Now, number one is as it spits it out, okay, transmitter, receiver, right? The signal comes out, Okay, and it's really going, uh, it's going, it's going in, in, in all directions, right? It's going in all directions. Most of it's going into the ground, okay? Most of it's going into the ground. As it's going in, it's kind of spreading out, right? As it's going into the ground, spreading out. But it's also projecting this signal towards the receiver. So this thing gets, the receiver gets inundated. Let's say with a, with a 200 megahertz antenna, for five nanoseconds, the receiver is getting inundated with signal. That's why you get that striping right on the top, right? You have a, a, a profile, okay? You get striping right on the top, right? And what some people call the ground surface, it's really the direct wave, but when it has a direct wave, it will just inundate this receiver with the direct wave, and it's actually masking off in your ground surface. So if you can remove this, right? If you can remove this with a background filter, which I'll try to remember to put in the comments below our video about background filters or just search in YouTube for a background filter. You can remove it, and that's helpful to help you see things a little bit clearer in the fuzzy zone. But with the pulse duration, for five nanoseconds worth, it's inundating this receiver. Okay, and it's also not just as inundating the receiver, putting this direct wave striations into your data, masking whatever is below it, uh, but that pulse duration is also going to mean that within five nanoseconds of the ground surface, when does your ability to tell where something is actually begin? At what point within that five nanoseconds do you actually have the ability to say, yep, I'm able to define this piece, this target right here? It's hard to say. So pulse duration is kind of also related to it. Uh, again, folks may argue with all three of mine. I'd love to hear your comments below. But there is this thing called the fuzzy zone. In that fuzzy zone, which varies depending on your frequency, Obviously, it's greater with a lower frequency, smaller with a higher frequency. Um, it will be difficult to identify targets within that zone. If you need to identify something that's very shallow, you should use something that's a higher frequency. If you need something that's not as shallow, you can use something with a lower frequency. If you need to identify both, you might want to use two or more different frequencies. So it's not impossible to see things in the fuzzy zone. It is possible but it is more difficult. If you liked the video, found it useful, uh, share it around, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We appreciate all your support. And if you have not done so yet, go over to learngpr.com, put your name and email address in and uh, get access to our introductory uh, uh, training video. It's about 40 minute long video. And we will send you these videos to your inbox every single week. Thank you so much. Good luck to you.